Josh Ram has been suspended indefinitely by NASCAR. Next-gen car testing looks to be resuming next week. And it looks like Corey LaJoy have, might have found his place for the 2021 season. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to another video. We have got a ton of NASCAR news to discuss today. Like I said, we're going to talk about Josh Ram. We're going to talk about viewership. Next-gen next car testing. Someone has an, I've seen, haven't seen in a couple of years is returning as a vice president of competition. Looks like Gateway is going to end up getting a date this for next year for the Truck Series. And we'll talk about Corey LaJoy once again. So let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. The first thing, like I said, we're going to talk about as Josh Reum is he has been suspended indefinitely by NASCAR. Now, a lot of people were shocked when this came out. The big reason that he has been suspended is apparently he put something anti-Semitic in a tweet. Now, what was that, you may ask? What did he put in his tweet? Apparently, he had a swastika on a toaster strudel. Yeah, uh, that's a no-no. That's 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 bad. Um, maybe when you tweet, make sure you think about what you're gonna do and when you tweet something out because you're gonna probably get in a lot of trouble. Just saying. Um, I don't hate Josh Room for this. I think he made a stupid, stupid mistake. Um, I think NASCAR did do the right thing by suspending him. For these actions, I think it was a stupid thing to do. That being said, I do forgive him because he did release an apology addressing the situation. He said he didn't mean to offend anybody. He basically said, I used to grow up in a family, a diverse family, lived in West Africa for 13 years. I honestly, I think Josh Reum, uh knows he messed up pretty, pretty bad because he deleted the tweet pretty quickly, but someone reported it to NASCAR. So probably an official, if I'm not saying reported to the top NASCAR officials. I think that's why I ended up getting suspended, which, Josh, my guy, um, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I hope Josh Reum can learn from this and get become a better person, like what Kyle Larson did. Maybe he'll do some cool stuff and, and become a better person, because I think he can do that. But that was a stupid move on his part. That being said... I do forgive him for his actions. On to the next story. We are going to be talking about the viewership of NASCAR. First, we're going to talk about NBC Sports portion of a NASCAR season. NBC Sports finished its half of the 2020 season flat in viewership with 2.597 million viewers. And according also, NASCAR says finished the 2020 season down 2% in viewership from 2019 at 3.058 million viewers per cup race on average. And that figure flips to 1% increase if you exclude the postponed Daytona 500. I'm going to be very honest with you. The fact that NASCAR was only down 2% considering we had a lot of rain delays this year. We had a lot of other issues that occurred in our sport, like COVID-19, all these sports happening at once, a bunch of races getting moved to different networks. Just That is honestly, to me, is a big win for the sport. It's not a major, major win, but it's a win for the sport. The fact that... If you take away the rain delays and you take away a lot of the other contributing factors to the ratings being down this year, I consider it a win. Like I said, I would like to see in general the ratings go up and not go down, but with all sports happening once in the many, many rain delays that took place this year to be in a serial looking date, Tone of 500, for example, we were on track of having huge, huge increase in ratings when Donald Trump came to the racetrack. That got a ton of media attention and it gained a lot of attraction in ratings. But unfortunately, because it rained, it got postponed to Monday. It rainings were extremely low for Daytona. They were down majorly, but again, it got rain delayed. I look back at some of the races, like the second uh, mid, the I think it was the first, second midweek race at a Charlotte. That got affected. Indy got affected a little bit. Pocono got affected. Homestead got affected. So, so many races this year ended up getting affected in the 2020 season. So, honestly, the fact that rains were not down 100% completely and were not in terrible, terrible, terrible like other sports. I think that's a major win for the sport. Hopefully, NASCAR can learn from this. And we don't have as many rain delays next year. And hopefully, we can get our craft together. And we continue to go up in ratings in our sport. On to the next story. We are going to be talking about next-gen car testing. As it looks like we're resuming next-gen car testing once again. As Kurt Busch and Mark Church Jr. will be testing the next-gen car on the road course at Charlotte on Monday, November 16th. And then the Oval on Wednesday, November 18th. One car will be the NASCAR car, and the other one will be the Action Express Racing Car. Now, why is it an Action Express Racing Car? The Action Express Racing Team is owned by Jim France, who runs NASCAR. On top of that, Gary Nelson used to be an official of NASCAR. So that is why uh, they basically are going to have an Action Express car, and they're going to have a NASCAR car. 
No one guarantees on who's going to drive what. I'm assuming maybe Kerr will drive the NASCAR. Maybe Marcio Jr. will drive maybe the... Or Kerr will run the Action Express car. Maybe Marcio Jr. will run the, the NASCAR car. Who really knows what we're, they're going to do. But here's something really interesting as well. For the first time, you're going to see two cars on the racetrack at the same time. I think from here on out, you're going to start seeing no more single car tests. I think NASCAR needs to start, in my opinion... After having a two-car test, the next time we do a test, they need to bring three cars out on the racetrack and have these guys do a couple laps around like a mile and a half racetrack where the racing has struggled. Maybe like Texas. Try to test something out there. I know Texas is a bad racetrack. Maybe test an action car at a racetrack like that. I think it really could help the racing in general for the next-gen car. Because again, they need to be testing as many cars out on track as possible. And I think eventually, you're going to start seeing five-car tests, six-car tests, seven-car tests. To see how the racing is going to be. And I do start to expect seeing testing a lot more frequently. I think a lot of it is waiting until 2021 comes around. I think the first, second week of January, you're going to be starting seeing testing every other week. I don't think it's going to be every single week you're going to see testing. But I still will expect to start seeing a lot more testing. Trust me, there's going to be a lot more testing on car than we saw with the uh, the Gen 6 car. That And guess what happened? The Gen 6 car was a complete disaster. But here's one thing to understand. This next-gen car has to work. It has to succeed because all the positive momentum NASCAR has gotten, all the teams coming into the sport, all of the great schedule changes, all the new tracks coming to sport, all the investors coming to sport, that will be all for nothing if this next-gen car is a bust. And if the racing, if we start seeing good notes from this, it's going to be good. But if the racing sucks over the next couple of years, Fans are not going to like it, fans are going to leave, and fans are going to quit watching the sport. So, the next-gen car, in my honest opinion, it must succeed to keep the sport rolling. Also, fixing the platform would be one thing you could do, but I digress on that. Anyway, the next-gen car has to succeed, or the sport's future could be at stake long-term. On to the next story. It looks like Jimmy Fenning is going to become the vice president of competition at Roush Fenway Racing. Jimmy Fenway... Fen Fenning has been at Roush for a very, very long time. He worked with Mark Martin in the past, has worked with multiple drivers in the past, and led him to a ton of success at Roush Fenway Racing. I think that this can honestly be a major, major boost for the future of Roush Fenway Racing. They need a, like, a true, true leader in sport. No offense to Jack Roush, but he ain't like the big, big leader. Right now you have two kind of young drivers who are completely unproven, like, well, one older driver, Ryan Newman, but he's on the way out. And you have Chris Buescher, who is kind of still unproven as well, though he did, did get a win at Pocono with uh, Front Row Motorsports, so that was a range short win. He's not proven himself 100% completely. I think Jenny, that Jimmy Fenning could also help the crew team small and make these drivers better. And hopefully, with Jimmy Fenning coming over with them next year, we get to see a lot more from them in 2020 season. I'm really excited, to, not 20 season, 2021 season. I'm really excited to see what they're going to do next year and what Jimmy Fenning is going to do next year. But I'm also very excited to see what happens. I think Jimmy Fenning can bring a lot of notes and a lot of tools to them for the 2021 season. And on to the next story. We are going to be talking about Gateway International Speedway. As it looks like the Gateway is indicated, it will be on the Truck Series schedule next week. Well, schedule next year. Not next week. There's no race next week. Um, it looks like they're going to be on a schedule next year. Um, basically, by they had a poll. And it looks like... According to Bob Pockers as well, it looks like the Truck Series schedule is going to be out within the next couple weeks, which is really, really good. Because I'm really wondering what the Truck Schedule is going to look like next year. We know that Iowa is not going to be on a schedule for the Truck Series next year. And it looks like now we know that Gateway is getting on a schedule. I've heard rumors of Langley Speedway being on the Truck Series schedule for the 2020 season. Uh, 21 season. I keep thinking 2020. We're 2021. Um, hopefully the racing, hopefully we do go to Gateway because again, I think the biggest reason is because of the governor, J.B. Pritzker, uh, with the COVID restrictions. Here, we're going to have a hard time having a cup date, and I know that Gateway really wanted to sell that out. That being said, it is good that Gateway is most likely going to be on the schedule next year, and I cannot wait to see the Truck Series head back to Gateway in the 2021 NASCAR Truck Series season. And now we get into the final story, and probably the biggest story of all of them, Silly Season News. Corey LaJoy is currently the favorite for a ride with Spire Motorsports in 2021 per sources. This is according to Adam Stern. Spire has also had talks with Hendrick Motorsports about possibly buying parts and equipment from the powerhouse organization. 
I've heard these rumors for the last couple weeks that Corey LaJoy is probably the biggest driver in the running to go to Spire Motorsports. He really is one of the last free agents that we do not know that is going there. Brian Priest is not signed with JDG Doherty at the moment, but we know that he's probably signing here very, very soon, a re-signing with this team. And for the last couple weeks, it's been indicated that he's going to Spire. And at this point, I was thinking, hmm, why go to Spire? They're kind of a downgrade from Go Fast Racing, even though they're kind of equal in a sense. It's kind of a downgrade. But if you actually look at if they're going to be working to try to work with Hendrick Motorsports, and Spire said they really want to invest and become a better team with the next-gen car, I think this could help Spire Motorsports go from being a back market team to more of a mid-pack team. I don't expect this team, if they get officially get Corey LaJoy, I don't expect this team to become a top-tier organization. I really, really don't. At the moment, maybe with the next-gen car, they will be able to become a top-tier team. But if they are able to get Hendrick equipment, since they are probably going to have Hendrick engines next year, that actually is going to help because, remember, Rick Hendrick and uh, Rich Chose, their engine companies are going to be working together next year. That's a really key factor to why I think this fire could definitely improve next year. And I think that if they get Corey LaJoy, who is a solid driver, who can consistently run a lot better than he finishes, get a lot better finishes than what the team should be getting. I think this could really help a team like Spire Motorsports, and I think it really can help Corley Joy. I really think Corley Joy's goal next year, if he's officially going to Spire Motorsports, I think his goal is to try to finish in the top 25 in the standings. I think you can't really expect him to make the playoffs. Again, Spire Motorsports has really never been above a top 30 threshold team. They're usually about a top 35 threshold team, if we're going to be honest. So in my honest opinion, with him probably going to Spire Motorsports next year, I need to start seeing something for Corridor. I think he does have a lot of potential. And I'm not 100% surprised, like I said, that he's probably going to end up going to Spire next year because he said that he's really wanted to work with Rick Hendrick and they have a partnership starting next year with Hendrick Motorsports. So they're probably going to improve in some aspects. I don't expect them to take major, major, major steps, but I expect them to take some pretty small steps to go into the future. And then when the next, char- next gen car comes around, I think that you're going to see some major, major steps for Corey LaJoy in the 2021 season. But with it probably being out, Corey LaJoy is probably going to be going to Spire here very, very shortly. I cannot wait to see what the future holds for Corey LaJoy, and I cannot wait to see what happens for Spire Motorsports in the near future. So, anyway, that is going to be it for today's NASCAR news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel, turn notifications so you can be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Links are below for that. And comment your thoughts on today's video. How excited are you that Corey Joy is probably going to Spire? Are you excited about this or not? Let me know in the comments below. And tell me what you think about the ratings. Are they good to your opinion? Are they a win in the sport or not? Let me know in the comments below. And what do you think about Josh Green? Do you think Josh Green should have gotten a big, bigger penalty than he did or not? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Make sure you do like this video so YouTube can recommend these videos. Do that. I appreciate it. Anyway, see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.